wanted to live in Manhattan, but I didn't want to take all my money. And I found this place through a friend. And it's a great location. It's right near Lincoln Center, Central Park. It's a great deal. Okay. I'm sure there's some compromises, but uh, it's worth it. It's 90 square feet. I, um, I'm also a professional organizer, so organizing the space was a challenge, but one I was happy to take on. So when I first moved in, the woman who was here before had just furniture. You could barely, there was a strip of blank space down the center of the room, but I just got rid of everything, and I knew you had to go up when you organize in New York City, so that's what I did, and I, I wanted a space because this is where I write. And this is where I do my art, my place to hang out and read. There's no kitchen, but I've created my own little kitchen, little fridge. So I have to food shop a few times a week because it cannot hold that much stuff. But in New York City, most people store their laundry in their stoves anyway. So toaster oven that holds the bananas. Storage as, you know, it's so important for a New Yorker. So there's a cabinet. Gotta have a hot pot. You know, I can make hard boiled eggs. <laughs> One of the things I did was there were these sliding doors that, for any apartment, are hard to get into. I got rid of the doors, and then I put up a curtain. For the most part, we don't even wear half of what we own anyway, so I'm always kind of going through and seeing what I can get rid of. The bathroom is pretty big for, um, you know, you just got to be careful you don't hit your knee when you're sitting on the toilet. I think it's actually gotten bigger since I've been in the apartment. I've just gotten used to sitting, you know, sometimes you have to sit sideways, but... It can be a little, you know, daunting getting out of the tub and getting into the tub. You just get out slowly. But you're only in the shower once, once a day. The first night I slept in the apartment, I had a panic attack. When I first saw it, I thought, oh, this is easy. And when I actually went up to bed and I woke up in the middle of the night and there was the ceiling and I had a friend stay over because I thought I would fall out of the bed. When I woke up, there was the ceiling here and the wall on every side and... I wanted to get out quickly, and she was saying, relax, go slowly, because you're going to fall. And um, so then I had put, I had installed a handle on the side and a hook. And then after that night, I have not had another panic attack, and I love it up here. And at night, it's cozy. When you're up here at night, and you just have the light on, and it's the only light, and I've got my reading. And I used to have so many books, but I've gotten rid of a lot of books. My sister gave me a Walden Pond. So he stayed in a little space. Got to keep that one. Just to remind me that it's okay to live in a small space and to write. And, uh, you know, he's my inspiration. You know, obviously I'm not in the woods. I'm in the jungle here in New York City. But it's just a really quiet, cozy little space up here. And it's enjoyable. And where do you spend most of your time? I spend most of my time when I'm in the apartment probably at my desk. So this is where I write. I have a book coming out next month. So here's the cover to the book, What Puppet Told Me. My maternal grandfather, he's a Holocaust survivor. I also have a studio space downtown, down at Paragraph, the writer's studio downtown in the village. I'm also an artist, I make shrinky dink art, which is appropriate since it's the only art that can fit in this apartment. The great thing about New York is you can do so many different things at once. I look out my window and it's New York City. I mean, that's my backyard. Central Park is a block away. I can go into the park. I have Lincoln Center, I have libraries all over, the subway is two blocks away. You know, I go to the gym, I have gyms all over the place. The city really has a lot to offer and sometimes I feel like I am, you know, you're in college and it's a huge campus and you can just take advantage of everything you want to take advantage of. I mean, I like to get out of the city as well and, you know, ride my bike 100 miles on the weekends and be in nature and it's the best of both worlds. Here's <laughs> yoga. <laughs> So, you know, you can come down, do your yoga. And occasionally you'll hit your foot or your arm against something, but I've had my whole family in here, and I've had probably eight or nine people hanging out. And I have a friend with a larger apartment two blocks away, and we end up hanging out here because it's cozier. <laughs> I don't feel stressed about rent. I don't feel a huge overhead. My father's a bankruptcy attorney. I think we learned early on you don't acquire what you don't, what you can't afford. So he kind of instilled that in us. I said I was going to come live here for a year. It kind of has turned into three years and counting, but um, it's, I'm able to work and live here and travel and not be concerned that I have this huge space I have to come back and take care of.